Geographers, today is the day. Today we talk about how to approach stimulus questions on the AP Human Geography National Exam. All right, so the nice thing about the AP National Exam is that College Board doesn't want you to be surprised. Believe it or not, they want you to be prepared. In fact, we can see that College Board has already told us what stimuli you might see on the AP National Exam. For the AP Human Geography Exam, you need to be prepared to answer questions that include reference maps, tables, charts, charts, graphs, images, infographics, and or landscapes. These are the most common stimuli used on the national exam. College Board has also let us know that those stimulus questions will be evenly split between qualitative and quantitative sources. So make sure that you are familiar with both sets of data. Now roughly 30 to 40% of the multiple choice questions will reference stimulus material, and two of the three FRQs will have a stimulus component. So don't be surprised when when you keep seeing stimulus questions pop up on your exam. This is why when creating my new exam slayer, I made sure to add a bunch of stimulus-based questions for the unit tests and the AP practice exams, allowing you to practice these types of questions in the new exam simulator. Plus, as a bonus, I threw in a bunch of exclusive videos that break down each of the core skills, allowing you to practice how not only stimulus questions will appear on the test, but also how the exam will test your skills. Oh, and if you you are in other AP classes, no worries. There is also a URP and exam slayer for all of these other courses as well. Okay, so we have an understanding of what types of stimulus questions you need to be prepared for. Now what we need to do is shift gears and talk about what you need to do when you come across a stimulus question. For starters, I need you to slow down. Trust me, this is easier said than done. When it comes to the national exam, you're going to want to go through questions fast, which makes sense. I mean, you're being timed. It's a national exam and there's a lot of pressure on you. But trust me, resist that urge to go through questions fast and slow down. When you get to a question with a stimulus component, always take time to break it down. Read the title, the legend, any accompanied text, prompt, and of course the stimulus itself. For example, take this satellite image here. This is from the CED and is part of a practice exam. Right away when looking at the stimuli, I can see we are looking at how land is being divided. I notice that land has been organized into a grid pattern, and I also see that the stimuli will be used for multiple questions on the test, and that the image also comes from the United States Geological Survey. Notice that me analyzing the stimuli hardly took me any extra time, but it did allow me to better understand exactly what I am looking at. Now when I go to the test questions that are associated with this stimuli, I have a better understanding of what the questions are looking for. For example, here we can see we have question four from the test. Take a minute and pause the video and try to answer the question. When you are done, you can unpause the video. All right, now since we already took the time to analyze the stimuli, I can actually narrow this question down pretty quick. I can see that each answer references a different country. However, only one answer references the United States, which when paired with the fact that the source is the United States Geological Survey can help me conclude that A is the correct answer. Okay, so slowing down and observing the stimulus can help improve your score, but you also need to be active when taking this test. What I mean is you need to circle, highlight, underline, label, just mark up the test. This not only helps you slow down, but make sure you do not miss any key details that could be on the exam. And yes, before you ask, you can do all of this digitally. Trust me, this will will help you out a lot. During a test, you are stressed and most likely concerned about the time. This causes you to speed read and skim, resulting in you missing easy points. When taking the test, I would make sure to highlight any vocab terms you see, the focus of the question, and also the task verb. Also be on the lookout for the scale of the question and the theme. For example, is the question asking about political, social, environmental, or economic factors? Now, if you don't believe me about slowing down and being active, just think about how many times in your class you've looked over a test that you got back from your teacher only to see question after question that you knew but for some reason didn't get right because you put some random answer and you just sit there thinking to yourself what in the world was I thinking well to be fair you probably weren't thinking clearly during the test because you were stressed 
So just do me a favor and be active when you're taking this exam and don't forget to slow down once in a while. Okay, now I can hear some of you already saying, Mr. Sin, if I keep slowing down, I'm not gonna have enough time. I mean, these tests are timed and I need to make sure that I finish. That's a good point. And this brings me to my last piece of advice. And that is you need to take practice tests. You need to practice observing data. You need to practice highlighting parts of the questions. You need to practice breaking down questions you may not know. And you need to practice taking tests in a time situation. I know for my students, the big worry was always running out of time on the national exam. And one of the easiest ways to reduce that stress is to practice taking time tests. To help you practice for your upcoming exam, I created multiple practice exams. Just click the link down below to check them out in the new Ultimate Exam Slayer. All the practice exams in the Exam Slayer use the new exam simulator to help you practice taking fully digital tests, which will help you get used to the real exam. Plus, when you are done, you get a full breakdown of your results, including which unit or topic each question connects to. That way you can see exactly where you need to study. Oh, and if you do check out the Exam Slayer, you will also find unit exams, videos breaking down each skill of the class, FRQ exams, exam trackers, and a bunch of other test prep resources. All of which focus specifically on test prep strategies and practice. If you have my ultimate review packet, you can also find practice tests in that resource as well, along with exclusive videos, unit summary videos, and a bunch of other practice quizzes. But that product is specifically designed to help you review and learn the course content. Whereas the exam simulator is specifically designed to help with testing strategies and practice. At the end of the day, just remember you can do this geographers. No matter what happens, May, you will be fine. All right, that's all for me today. I am Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.